The problem that I have with personality psychology it's the, is that it's a horizontal model of typology, right? Every personality type is considered equal in terms of development, skill, and ability, regardless of your age, maturation, or how you improved your, your, and worked on yourself throughout your life. So here we see all the 16 personality types. All of them are in the middle. None is better or worse than others. None has achieved a higher level of growth or a lower level of growth. They're all the same. In a horizontal model, we can't advise people on how to improve or grow, right? So if we're all equal, there is no better or worse, and everyone's equal. That makes personal growth impossible. So when I started studying positive psychology, like Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi and the theory of flow, and when I started moving towards Abraham Maslow's theories, my view of reality became greatly confronted. I started questioning these kinds of views of life. And I started especially questioning these kind of binary views of life. So imagine that we look at this INTJ. Typically in the MBTI community, it's common to think of things as dichotomies. You either have a trait or you don't. You either are an intuitive or you're a sensor. You're either an introvert or an extrovert. There's no in-between, there's no level, there's no grades. Now, cognitive function theory goes a little bit beyond this and starts to move towards a more nuanced way of looking at things, but still, I wanted more nuance, and I wanted to most of all help this guy. Help this guy achieve a greater feeling of flow. If we looked at this INTJ, we might see an INTJ that's really good and really creative and really good at working on his personal needs for a long time and his introverted life might thrive. But this guy might also struggle with his social life. He might struggle with lack of optimism, lack of empathy, lack of connection to the world. He might struggle with inability to play and hyper-focus on professional work and goals, or a tendency towards struggling to assert himself and put himself forward in life. He might live in a dream world, right? So what can I do to help this guy live a happy and fulfilling life? That was my goal, and that's where I came to move to a more, some more nuanced way of looking at things, right? So to me, when looking at an INTJ, I'd see somebody that could change on these scales. There were INTJs that had different skills and abilities. Some were more imaginative, some were more independent, some more resilient, some more skeptical. All INTJs can vary across these preferences while maintaining their INTJ personality type. Some INTJs are uppercase introverted intuitives and some are uppercase thinking and judging types, right? And an uppercase thinking and judging type might score higher on, for example, ambition or assertiveness than what this ITJ did, right? So looking at and understanding this, you understand that every single person you meet is a unique, nuanced individual with their own level of development and skill. Suddenly, it became possible for me to give more rich advice and support towards people based on who they really were, instead of working on superficial or binary model of reality. So I moved towards a more vertical model of looking at the world to advise people towards personal growth. I started seeing different levels of INTJs, INTJs that had just started out their life. Maybe they were still working out what the difference was between the sky and the ground and mom and dad, right? An INTJ can start out undifferentiated, meaning they have no grasp of their skills and abilities or who they are and what the difference is between them and other people, right? And they can gradually move towards a more differentiated understanding. This is me and that's the world, right? And over time, they might even come to become so differentiated that they develop a certain ability towards specialization, towards certain tasks and abilities. Now, this might put them in a situation where they realize that they have certain skills and abilities and certain weaknesses that they struggle with, and they might avoid or overcompensate for these weaknesses, and they therefore might want to move towards integration, learning to become aware of your weaknesses and problems so that you can overcome them or account for them to and whatever extent is possible, right? And on top of that, once you've become integrated, you want to move towards actualization, right? So what you're really doing is you're becoming a full person instead of a limited person, because when you attach to a personality or a certain way of being, you can become very limited. You might tell yourself, well, I'm a person that does, doesn't want to be around people, so I will isolate myself and live lonely and uh, be alone for the rest of my life. Or you might say, I'm a person that uh, prefers creative tasks and hate practical tasks, so I will avoid anything practical that comes up to my way and just live in my head and in my dreams and my theories, right? Where everything's great and wonderful. But ultimately, you're not happy. You're not actualized. You're not transcended. 
you're like a caricature or a stereotype of a person because you're the person we read about in the psychology handbook. You're the person that has come to, for example, have a certain pattern of life that you keep tripping on over and over again. You're constantly stuck in a spiral that you can't get out of. So an actualized person is a complicated person. An actualized person has managed to learn to live and be themselves in every aspect of life, from the social to the recreational to the professional dimension of life. They are able to be themselves at work and in their private life and in relationships and in anything that they want to do. On top of that, you can even move towards transcendence, and that's one step above that. And I'm not going to confuse you all by going through that, but really what I'm trying to show is you can keep expanding your mind and your awareness and consciousness to grow and develop as a person. So. I came to move towards vertical theories of development and I came to reject these horizontal models of development because I realized their limitation when trying to be a good coach. I have people come to me for coaching every week. Uh, I have to think about what I can do to help them grow and develop. And if I tell them, well, you're just an INTJ, so you're always going to suck at empathy. You're never going to be able to have any form of grit. You're never going to be able to follow through on any practical task, right? What I'm doing is I'm limiting that person and I'm making them feel bad, bad and weak and lonely and alienated, essentially. And that's what a lot of people are doing online. Well, he's just an ENTJ, so he's just going to be a psychopath. <laughs> she's just an ISFP, so she's never going to be able to handle any form of abstract thought or complex theory. And yeah, he's just INFP, so he's just going to be lazy, right? Wrong. Actually, people can do and achieve a lot more than what we think. And... Carl Jung advocated towards actualization, growing and learning to be an INFP that can be authentic and honest in career and business settings, moving as yourself and finding ways to bring your artistic vision to life, also using it to create a financially successful life, right? So that's the goal. But this was a big crisis for me, because if I would hold to this belief that you can't change your personnel type, I would have to also accept that you can't grow or develop. But if I had to accept that you could grow and change as a person, I had to also accept that you could change your personality type. And that was something that's a big no-no in the MBTI community. You cannot change your type. You cannot do any differences. And an INFJ is just always an introvert. And an ENFP is always an extrovert. And if anybody starts crossing the lines, well, they're either doing something wrong or breaking some rule or... They were that type always, and they never had the other one. So you move towards a binary view of reality where, once again, people are either something or they're not, and there is no in-between, and there is no scale, and there is no spectrum, and there is no nuance. But psychology is complicated, and people are complicated. And Jung said we should see people as complicated individuals. I also want to briefly talk about relative versus absolute preferences. An INTJ who's transcended and really worked on himself, might possess skills and attention enough to surpass an ESFP. At the same time, he might still be relatively better at daydreaming and imagination than he is at attention. So personally, he prefers to use imagination to survive and manage the world. But when he needs to, he's comfortable using attention to deal with hands-on practical tasks. Similarly, when competing with an ESFP that hasn't worked on or developed themselves, can even compete with or outcompete an ESFP in these skills and abilities. So we have to understand that relatively he might still have a preference, but on an absolute or objective scale, he might still be better at the task or activity than an ESFP. So if we look at this scale, for example, we might see an INTJ that can outcompete an ESFP in teamwork and optimism related skills because he's worked on that and he knows how to do it. His 2.5 in optimism is actually a 12 when compared to the rest of the population. And his imagination is not just 17.5 in this scale. He's, it's probably 100, right? So way superior to a lot of people out there, right? Similarly, you might be an ESFP that has come to develop their imagination and their daydreaming to surpass that of an undeveloped INTJ, right? So that's what I'm trying to say, that there can be relative differences and objective differences. So my view of the MTI has come to challenge itself and become more developed over time. And that's led to me starting to feel like I lost faith in personality psychology. But over time, I came to regain faith in personality psychology as I found a healthier way to do it, a way that felt 
more in line with modern psychology, with the insights of Abraham Maslow and Alfred Adler, and of different theories out there, essentially. And you can learn about all these things on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Eric Thor. On patreon.com slash Eric Thor, I challenge everyone with quizzes, exercises, and tasks, and special videos where you learn to grow and develop and improve and work on yourself so that you can move towards actualization. And what's actualization? It's finding your purpose, how you can uniquely contribute to the world, your unique role in the world. And your role in the world is not to be a TJ. I promise you this. Your role is to be you, whatever that means. No other person has that role, has that purpose. No person in the world has the exact same person as another person has the exact same purpose as another person. Essentially, you're unique and you've got something you got to do in the world that only you can do. What's that? Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.